Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. Uh, I have a video for you today that uh, I wasn't expecting on making. This is just something that came into the shop in a hurry. Um, I have a forklift extension fork. These are what you could put on short forks to make them longer. This one's probably about five feet long. It hangs off the edge of the table quite a bit. And what happened to this puppy is the clamp that holds it to the back of the fork snapped off. Now, this isn't because of metal fatigue or anything else. It looks like the weld, uh, it was either quenched in water or somebody dropped it in the snow, or maybe when it was welded, the metal was too cold. And today I want to talk a little bit about what can cause different welding failures, uh, what can cause welds to break, and something that we call the heat affected zone. All right, guys, here is the break. And uh, you can see how long this fork is. This is about five, maybe five and a half feet. And the weld didn't fail at the weld point. It actually failed behind it. And this is something we call the heat affected zone. It's so much of a distance before and after where your weld bead is. And I want to show you something. If I can get close enough so you can actually see it well with this. I don't know how well you could make out that granular structure. But when you have welds that, uh, or metal rather, that when it breaks it looks like it's almost sand uh, in a cast, usually that means it was either rapidly cooled or it was just way too cold when it was being welded. Now, the way this broke, I'm not going to try to weld this back onto this. I am going to cut all of this off and I have some material and I'm going to remake this piece, ground the sides flat again, and just weld it back on because that would be the right thing to do here. Just looking at how this metal broke, um, I wouldn't trust it to try to weld it back together. And uh, I am filming this video in two pieces. It's going to be one video, but I'm filming it in two pieces because this is one of the only two forks that a company has in here in Norwalk. And they move around pallets that weigh uh, 1,200, 1,500 pounds, and they really, really need their forklift. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to do the repair, and then I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about porosity, the heat affected zone, uh, temperatures and welding, and uh, things of that nature. So let me get this done and get it back to my client. All right, YouTube, so what exactly is the heat affected zone? You have a lot more going on here than just your weld bead. Let's say you have two plates that you want to join together, and you've made your bevels. As you come in here, and start doing your passes, heat is being transferred from this weld area and it radiates out in both directions. This is what's known as the heat affected zone. Why is this here? Why do we talk about this? What happens is as this starts to heat up, you're changing the metallurgical properties of the metal. Uh, you can do things like experience grain growth at high temperature, um, recrystallization of the steel itself. And recrystallization is exactly what that piece was that I showed you earlier, that grainy structure. And once the metal gets like that, I don't even want to re-weld it. I'll just throw it away and, and start with a new piece of steel. But as you start building this up, your heat zone is going to get wider and wider and wider. That's why in some welding applications what you'll see happen is people will make a couple of passes, clean up their weld and let it rest, and they won't bring it up to a high temperature. They'll actually keep it somewhat temperature controlled. So what else can heat do when you're welding? All right, YouTube, let's talk about something else that goes on with metal when it gets hot. Uh, it's distortion. Now, distortion can be twists, bends, or bows in the metal. Uh, it can be uh, expansion, contraction, any one of those things is distortion. Now, why is this important with welding? Well, you're obviously putting a lot of heat into your material. But I'm going to give you a really easy example. Uh, we're going to say that this is a half inch thick piece of steel. And this is a, um, a candidate for a work surface. We're going to make a welding table out of this. Is half inch thick going to be thick enough to stop heat distortion? Is it going to stay flat? You want to have a flat work surface. So here's the question I'm going to ask myself. Am I going to be doing a lot of TIG work 
where uh, I'm welding thin pieces of aluminum or stainless steel. Uh, projects I'm not going to be putting a lot of heat into this table. And if that's the answer, then yeah, half inch is probably plenty thick enough. But what's going to happen if I want to do a lot of torch work, I want to do brazing or gas welding or heating and bending, and I want to use this tabletop for that? Well, half inch might not be the best solution. What happens when you start heating one side of a piece of metal? This is your tabletop, this is the bottom. As you put heat into the metal, it's only going to travel down so far unless you're really focusing the heat in one spot. It's going to create a heat affected zone. Now what's going to eventually happen is the sides of the material are going to act as the heat sink and the heat is going to start traveling this way, going in both directions. So what's going on here? You have this cold spot down here working almost like a vice jaw that's going to prevent the metal from moving in this direction. So as expansion happens, it's going to expand up towards the flame. So you're going to start getting a little bit of a convex shape to the top of your welding table. Now as that's happening, that means the energy or the, the force of the heat is causing the metal to want to bend down. So it's almost like taking this ruler, it's going to want to flex and bow like an arc. Now because this is going to cool down, when you take the flame away, you're going to start getting contraction. And contraction doesn't necessarily mean that piece of metal is going to come back flat. It's going to actually extend a little bit more because of all of the different characteristics that have changed within the metal in the table. So that's going to cause this bar to bend in a different direction. It's going to cause it to bend this way. One of the best examples of distortion I can think of is when you're making a T-joint and you don't tack weld your joints properly. Sometimes you're in a rush, you might forget to tack weld, you throw a piece on and you run an entire bead. If I'm putting heat into this, what's going to happen is this whole piece is going to want to kind of migrate this way because the heat is going to draw this material to it. Uh, I'm going to take this off camera and you can see that, uh, let me get into the camera here. Ah, there I am, kind of shooting upside down. I'm going to weld this on only one side with no tacks off camera so I can come back and show you what it's going to look like. Alright guys, so here's the T-joint. I did not tack one side and I welded a complete bead on the other. Uh, there's the bead. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of porosity in it, a little divot from where I really didn't clean the steel all that well, but uh, you know this is just for a demo. Uh, I just ran it over a wire wheel uh, real quick. But um, I don't know how well you could see this, but this joint actually opened up a little bit, and if you flip it over to this side, there's a, there's a pretty decent gap there, and that was flush when I started welding. But this is why you want to tack down all four corners of something like a T-joint before you weld. So, Here. As I'm welding on this side, the heat is pulling the metal this way. And that's why that gap opened up. That's exactly what I, I said was going to happen. Now, if you have the time, go check out a channel called WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. guy's name is Jody. He's really cool. Um, makes me look like uh, I just started doing this. Uh, he's been professionally welding for like, it seems like a millennia. But um, he did a really cool video on distortion where he put a laser pointer on the end of a piece of steel and he started welding the other end and he put a circle on the wall and it, he showed how far the metal distorts in different directions. So, and doing different uh, types of welding with a little more heat, a little less heat is a really cool experiment and I watched it a couple of different times. Um, so if you're interested in this sort of thing, go check out his channel uh, and look up his video on metal distortion. It's really, really cool. Okay guys. So I hope I gave you a little something to think about, maybe answered your question if you wanted to know what the heat affected zone is. So what is it by definition? You have your parent material and you have your weld bead. The heat affected zone is the level of heat transferred into the material and how far it expands into the parent metal. That is the heat affected zone by definition. 
Um, distortion. What causes distortion? Metal will distort and twist depending on where and how long you leave heat on the metal surface. That will determine how it distorts, if it distorts at all. So, what's another reason that that weld at the beginning of the video could have failed? Here's something that a lot of people don't think about. Preheating material. And I know it's important for things like cast iron, thick chunks of aluminum, but if you look on regular stick electrodes, sometimes right on the side of the can, it'll say, do not weld on apparent metal that's colder than 70 degrees. So, that forklift is used outside all the time. Maybe they took that fork off, they had it repaired, and it was the middle of December, and the metal was too cold. They didn't preheat it properly. That could cause a break like that just as easily. So there's a lot of different things to consider when you're doing a repair. And this video is not meant to scare anybody. There's a lot of different things that can go wrong in welding, trust me. But if you are just starting out or you're like a weekend warrior, you go out and you, you want to just weld your mower deck or you know fix a garden tool or something like that, you don't have to worry about any of this. This is just an informational video describing what these things are. But if you decide you want to kind of jump into welding feet first and you want to start building things like cargo trailers, things that may haul a heavy load, that's when you really need to pay attention to what you're doing and how your project is being put together and how you're putting it together. So that being said, uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, I'm going to end the video here. And this has been Jeff, Dark Moon Metal, once again, and I'll see you again soon.